What's up, everybody? This is Bean with a very special edition of Shmup Theory, where we'll be taking a look at chaining in Chapter 1 of Ikaruga. I figured that showing the true beauty behind this game and chaining in it is best demonstrated through video, as opposed to reading through a bunch of text and clicking some random YouTube videos. And I also figured, since it's the one-year anniversary of Shmup Theory, that I'll give you guys an extra treat and try something different. So, let's take a look at chaining in Ikaruga. First, let's get some things out of the way. Number one, this is not a world record score-shattering video that'll take you decades to master. This is actually just footage of myself playing through chapter one to the best of my ability. The final score is just above three million, which is graded as an S, which is one step higher than an A. The world record method for scoring over 4 million and getting an S++ involves much more complicated maneuvers that I'm just not ready to accept into my routine, especially when I have much more daunting obstacles in the near future, such as Chapter 4. Number 2, for players who are looking for the absolute perfect run, you won't find it here. This run is in no way the right way to go through the level. There are opportunities for improvement every second, so I just want to make it clear that this is simply the way that I play the game. This video is especially made for those who love Ikaruga, but could never get into the art of chaining because of its steep learning curve. If anything, you'll be getting a chance to hear what goes on in my head when tackling this game. So, now that that's out of the way, let's get down to business. By the way, I'm playing Chapter 1 under Normal Mode, so a lot of these methods aren't going to work on easy or hard, and the rest of the settings are at default. The way chaining works in the game is pretty simple. The game is comprised of black enemies and white enemies, and when you shoot three consecutive at the same time, such as the three white enemies that appear at the beginning of the game, you'll fill up your chain meter on the left side. When that fills up, you have successfully made one chain and after three, it gets reset, so you can either shoot another three white enemies or shoot three black enemies. It's really up to you. So, as the game starts, you have six whites on the right, six blacks on the left, six whites on the right, six blacks on the left. I like to stay at the top just so I can collect all of their debris that they shoot out. After that, you should take a break and let the enemies crisscross so that the blacks are on the right. And a very important factor is to let that top right black enemy get down onto the screen. You'll find that if you move left a little too soon, he'll still be alive and then the whole chain is ruined. So I like to hold back a little bit longer than usual. And then to make up for that lost time, I release my chains on the whites to just kind of clear them out of the way. And then those last six are pretty simple. Usually by this point, I'm at around 408,000, and that's the last time I'm going to be looking at my score until the boss. So, it starts off pretty simple at the beginning. You got a bunch of white enemies, a bunch of black enemies. I never change color, just so I don't have to think too much. The ones that stop at the top are going to shoot at you, and so I kind of take advantage of this by shooting four single shots into this one enemy, and then letting them stop shooting, and then I kill them. Here there's a mix-matched set of black and white enemies, I destroy the whites because I'm still black, and then once they're gone, I destroy the blacks. This part here is a little fun as you go through the black enemies, and if you're staying towards the center of the screen, when these two cross your path and make a straight line, that is the opportune moment to release your homing lasers, which should clear all nine enemies in one fell swoop. If you wait in the center, then their debris will come back to you, filling up your bar, thus allowing you to release immediately after onto these white ones that are going to appear out of nowhere, and then you can just shoot the ones on the right. After that, there's three little white guys on the right, and then another three black guys on the left. I find that by the time I get to the black guys on the left, I'm lined up perfectly for the next part, which is probably the most difficult part of my route. So I'm going to explain this one a little bit more detailed. What you want to do is already be shooting before the enemies appear, so that when they rise up from the background, they'll effectively fall into the bullets that are already there, which will kill them, because you want to be as quick as possible to get to the next section. So after those four are destroyed, you want to move over to the left and kill those two before the entire formation changes. After that, you can just do a full sweep to the right until you get all of those whites. Take another break for the formation to change once more, and get those last two whites on the right. 
and after that you're free to get the remaining six black ones. If you're quick enough, then you should get a bonus amount of enemies here that come down in triplets. And don't worry about shooting those big guys in the background because they are actually still in the background. And as soon as you destroy the little guys, then you'll be ready to start this section. So I just keep on firing and stay on the left side as well. As soon as all three black enemies are destroyed, you should be right along the line of bullets from the white one. So move into those and then switch to black and start shooting while moving through the little hole that it makes in its fire. After those two are destroyed, move on back to the black and do the exact same thing. But here, instead of doing the same method on that white one on the right, I turn black and then release my homing lasers, which kind of get the job done a little bit quicker than usual and gives you a bonus after that. These enemies coming down here are not exactly centered for chaining, so you kind of have to wiggle left and right a little bit in order to keep it going. If you stay in the center, it'll be lost. At this point, you're going to get a little bit of a break, but the next maneuver is a little tricky, and I really don't have any way to describe it other than by listening to the cues and the music. So when you hear the certain note play, you'll know to start moving right, and you shouldn't be too far down or too far up because your bullets can only move at a certain rate as you move across the screen. It's really complicated, but uh, I guess it's a little bit easier to just show it, so here we go. The way this works is that even though your white bullets hit the white enemies, it's a little too weak to destroy them. So it kills the black ones immediately, and then you can finish up the job on the two white ones. And since those are only two white ones, this third big guy is going to be your chance to finish the chain for that. And what I like to do here is completely focus my attention on the enemy's health so that I know exactly when he's going to die. And right before he dies, I switch polarities to white so that I can reap the benefits of collecting all of his little debris. This section here is a little tricky to get the guys spinning around you. What I like to do is look in the top left, and once I see the beginning of a set of three, I follow it until it gets to me, and that's about how fast I can react to it. So here, I'm looking at the black ones that are coming, and then I start shooting, and the rest just fall in place. After that, I kill three little guys, and while I'm there, I get three more. What I do here is a little double tap so that I can get the white one and then the black one that'll start the next chain. These guys aren't too bad, especially if you're the opposite polarity, and you can hide down here while you're waiting to kill off this guy. Switch polarities and move on to the white one, and make sure to stay right underneath him so that you don't accidentally shoot these ones that appear in the middle. What I do here is wait for the two blacks to overlap each other, needing only one single shot to destroy them. Then when the two whites above separate, I shoot the other two above that, which gives me four, which will leave me with one remaining after I defeat this big black one. So what I do is kind of pick one off from the middle line right there. Finishing off this big white one, I'm going to need two more whites to finish the chain. So what I do is kind of wait for the opportune moment and then slip right in between those last two on the line. This is where I lose most of my points for getting that four million that I was telling you about earlier. All I get now is one bonus line when in the world record video they get lots of bonus lines of enemies. But here I make the best of what I have and clear these last three chains. And of course this little black one in the corner for those extra few points. This boss is pretty fun. To kill some time at the beginning, because I guess I'm that bored, uh, I like to shoot this little black one right before he draws his sword. Once he draws his sword, I stay right underneath it and then shoot with black. Because the key here in this boss battle is to defeat him as quickly as possible for the most points. When he brings his shield out and starts shooting all these black bullets, you might want to move a little bit further to the left than he is so that you can catch up with him. And after a couple seconds, assuming your meter is completely filled, just release on him to get this process over with. Yes, that was an angry shake. This method was kind of taken from the pros, where you turn white, and then you turn black, to absorb all of the little confetti that shoots out. And right before you turn white again to repeat the process, you release, so that you can kind of take a little bit extra chip damage off of him, since you're black. The final part of it is pretty simple. I recommend you stay black and just learn to weave through these five big lasers that home in on you. They always make a gap on the left and right, so I just keep on going through the gap while minding the little white confetti. And before you know it, you're going to be killing him off with hopefully 70 to 73 seconds remaining. I think the best I've ever seen anyone do is 74. And I guess as some type of ritual with this game, I always like to go on top of the boss and turn white before they blow up, so that when the explosion dissolves, all that's left is the Ikaruga. That's really corny. Cool. I'm sorry I share that with you. So that was it. Hope you enjoyed. I know it may be a little intimidating at first to see all of this, but the key here is practice, 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 times a thousand.
if you happen to have the GameCube version, you're in luck because they have something called Conquest Mode, which lets you pick individual sections of each level, so you can keep on trying them over and over. You can even attempt it in slow motion, or even have the computer do a fairly good run. So, whether you're new to the whole chaining game, or if you've been laughing hysterically at what I consider to be a skillful run, I can, at the very least, hope that you've learned something along the way. If not about Ikaruga, then about my undying love for a game that I've poured hundreds of hours into without ever seeing the credit screen. Until next time, this has been... Later.